that diabetes in the, the community of Musini is a very important issue. It's a growing epidemic across the country, specifically for Aboriginal people. Well, initially when I heard what the story was, it was a new idea for me. I haven't heard of any project of its kind. So I was really curious of how it would pan out and what it actually was. As for um, selecting the youth in the community, it was more like uh, they came to our door as opposed to going and searching. Mm -hmm. And we also use other um, programs within the Friendship Center who are already working with certain youths. And so we, we rounded up a few of them through, through that uh, through the other programs in the center. I had no idea what was gonna, how it was gonna roll out. Um, the best part that, for me out of this project is the, the youth involvement, the engagement process, them giving them responsibility to go and secure and you know, to approach other individuals in the community because it's not an easy thing to do. My name is Tyron Androp and uh, I'm doing a uh, story voice and I'm interviewing uh, Desai uh, Kalpatik. Hi, I'm Irvin Wasi introducing Arlene Ferries. Welcome, Michelle. <laughs> hey, this is Brad and Sack and here with Story Voice. I'm here with uh... Jessica Kalpatik. Oh, diabetes is like a really horrible thing, I guess, especially in our community. It's like hearing what people had to say about like what they had their opinion on diabetes I guess. Just thought of it as a really bad thing to live with because my granny has it too and she's she's in Moose Factory now because she has it she's in the hospitals. Right now my mom is like diagnosed with diabetes so she's gonna have to like work harder. I only knew like a little bit like how to like um maintain your health as a diabetic, I guess. My late granny had diabetes. My paternal granny has diabetes. My aunt has diabetes, who's now using insulin for her blood sugar. My uncle almost had a foot amputation. He's now walking with a cane. And I uh, also have a friend who has diabetes. I got a job like two years ago where my job was to create awareness uh, about diabetes and encourage healthy living. And that, that was about two years ago. And doing that job has opened me up to like so much information and uh, talking to people with diabetes, um, talking to people just about it in general, going out to communities and doing like presentations and just really opening up my eyes to it. How does diabetes touch you? Well, being a, I'm a diabetic and when I found out I was a, di a diabetic, I really hated it because I never thought I'd be a diabetic. And the, the way I found out as a diabetic, I was always sleeping, being really lazy until I got my blood checked. And they told me as a diabetic. My family, I guess some of my family members have it. And for me, I want to, uh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to, I want to prevent it as a healthy living coordinator in Mushini. Actually, I wasn't diagnosed yet, but I have all the signs for having di diabetes now, and uh, all the symptoms I have now are confirmed that I'm a diabetic now. A lot of my family members have diabetes, and I know that if when I get older, I could be affected by it also, so try my best to eat healthy and stay healthy to avoid that. Pamela, tell me uh, who you profiled. My dad, Richard Mills, because he's been living with diabetes for a long time. It was difficult at first in many ways. Um, I had to change my eating habits. I've had to change the way I work. Uh, there's sometimes when I'm working, I have to stop and take something to eat because my sugar goes down. 
I've done that quite a few times. Uh, my sleeping uh, patterns have changed. It's, it's not a very nice thing to go through. I heard about just like a couple weeks ago or something that he, like, he had to like sit down, like squat into the floor because he got dizzy. And like, like he never knows when he needs to eat something. It just comes and then he's like, oh, I have to now. I think it's making me uh, realize that uh, how important it is to take care of yourself, which I failed to do. That's how I became a diabetic. I didn't look after myself. So it's affected every area of my life. Well, I know a number of people in the community uh, have diabetes, uh, uh, you know, family, friends, and so forth. So, um, you know, it's really created a lot of, uh, you know, concern and, and awareness on, on my part as a, personally. But I think that, you know, diabetes has pretty much affected, you know, not only myself, but for, for other people in the community as well. And I also work in the hospital that have patients that have diabetes who I know had amputations and some are now using wheelchairs to get around. And also I'm an Aboriginal. Who did you profile? My mom. Okay, and, and why did you choose her? Because um, she's been wanting to go on a diet and she started her diet and now she's exercising every night. What are you doing to prevent diabetes? I've been drinking more water. I cut out pop and chips from my diet. I've been biking, walking, taking the kids out swimming to the sandbar, and having nutritional shakes at breakfast and lunchtime with a sensible dinner. Well, right now I'm watching my diet and I, and I try to exercise a lot. And also I, I'm into um, traditional medicine. The things I try to do is uh, move around. Most of the things I do during the day is I just I go up and down the stairs and try to move around. When I feel tired, I I try to go out for a fresh air. And uh, what I what I eat for uh, for healthy foods is vegetables and drink a lot of milk. And water, mainly water. What am I doing to prevent diabetes? Um, I play a lot of sports. I play a lot of hockey during the winters. Also, I play uh, basketball you know, at the gyms. I'm also uh, I'm very competitive when it comes to sports. I, I enjoy playing them you know, for just for the fun of uh, the game. I eat somewhat healthy, I drink a lot of water, I limit the sugar, try to. I cut down on a lot of my junk food and I work out, play sports. What are you doing to prevent diabetes? Not as much as I can do, but the biggest change I'm doing is uh, my eating patterns. I used to weigh, when I first became diabetic I was um, about 230 or so pounds. Now I'm down to in the one seven, late, uh, late 170s, 175. So that's helped a lot. And that's done by uh, just watching what I eat, learning about uh, the types of foods and how to fix my body. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Exercise. My little baby keeps me busy and hopping, carrying her around up and down stairs and things. So that's what I've done. You know, some people can't even afford to, you know, to, to get the food that we need to live healthy, right? Like our people, and the Shnabi, Cree, Mohawks, whatever, we ate from the earth. And I think that's the key, that's the answer, is, is to going back to the way that we live. We can't go back to our ways, like 100%, but we definitely can start eating from our mother earth, like, you know, to, to eat those fresh foods and get away from the processed foods, right? Yeah, it's a healthy life for you. Okay. Do you know anybody who has diabetes? Oh, I knew a lot of people. It's a lot of people, yeah. A lot of people around Moosonee, Ontario. Yeah. All right, right on. That's Brad and Winnie with the Diabetes <laughs> Prevention Awareness Program coming from the Moosonee Friendship Center. Yeah. Well, there are a number of things going on here at the local level. Uh, for example, the Moosonee Community Garden. Uh, 
are, have just started up here um, most recently. So it's kind of getting people involved in the community to come out and learn about, you know, gardening and, and at, the, at the same time, you know, uh, letting them be aware of uh, healthier food options or choices. How does my community help in preventing diabetes? Um, well, I know they have a lot of diabetes prevention groups, workshops, and whatnot around here. So I think our community helps a lot in, in that area. Like it can't be just, you know, like five people. I mean, that's where it could start. Like, you know, big changes always start with a few, few people, right? But it, eventually the whole community has to step up, right? I'm the Urban Aboriginal Healthy Living Program Coordinator and I promote healthy living. This is my pamphlet. I promote healthy living in a community and also I, I do uh, different programs, activities. I also have a fitness program downstairs. And, and letting them know that, that there's a problem uh, and that they can do something about it they just have to know and and trying to help them get get to the solution because it's not easy it's not easy like even living healthy myself trying to live healthy it's not easy because we're surrounded like we're colonized we're surrounded by all these fast food places we're surrounded by all these unhealthy things and everything's become so easy they have conventions they have uh, workshops about diabetes they take people out to diabetes camps and and they try to help them lots and you know it's all up to the people themselves who have diabetic, who are diabetics. They're the ones that really have to take care because they can't always watch you. It's always it's really up to you. How does your community help in preventing diabetes? There is two gyms available: the high school gym, JVEC gym. We have gym nights for kids, adults. People go swimming to the sandbar, Charles Island. People bike around town. There is... Well, I do know they put on a lot of activities for uh, younger people, which is a good thing. Uh, older people, they do have uh, soccer and hockey and uh, to keep them active as much as possible. Uh, as well as uh, uh, cooking classes. Uh, the Friendship Center used to put on uh, uh, cooking classes and uh, our local uh, health authority. Uh, so they're trying to educate people as best they can. At the arena, they also have hockey during the winter months, soccer during the summer months, and ball hockey, and they also play baseball at the baseball field. Um, yeah, as a social worker, so I, I know the importance of a working relationship, and I could see it happening in, in, with them as well, establishing that relationship with a community member. So, you know, that's very rewarding for me to see that. Brandon, what was the best part of it for you? I don't know, getting to know the interview we that like get to know them better like their intake like how what they think about diabetes and whatnot like i make videos but i never made video about like diabetes it was all right yeah. it was fun got to spend some time with some buddies and uh did some new things learned some st few stuff and uh and i hope to do it again yeah <laughs> Today, the message needs to be a, a lot more easier when it's visual. Uh, in the past, for me, with my family upbringing, it, it was a lot of verbal. You listen. As about today, with society and all the other distractions in technology, um, we have to take that in consideration where that's the way it is now, and we need to adapt. Mm, I thought it was fun, like the whole working with people and yeah, like working with cameras, getting to know about like diabetes and interviewing people and how all the other stuff works. It was really fun. Yeah. Experiencing uh, the cameras and the tripods and going around taking random videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And I guess what he said too, like dealing with the cameras and stuff, like learning how to like stay steady shots what kind of shots to take. And, yeah. uh, it's pretty good because uh, I learned about doing edit videos and stuff and uh, I liked it because uh, I met new people and had fun together. Yeah, I like it still. I think I might go back to media arts when I get back to school. My hope is, you know, awareness will be created 
they'll recognize that yes, this is a problem, um, that many people do live with it. However, they'll also recognize that it's preventable. Diabetes is preventable.